Welcome back guys to The Honest Footballer and on this episode we're going to start off with a trip to Ikea. So um, I've just got out of quarantine yesterday, moved into my new villa etc and obviously moving to a new country can be a very sort of daunting place thankfully for me. Um, I was here last year for six months but I signed another year contract so I'm back in Thailand for another year so I've moved into a new place slightly uh, bigger than my last place last year because um, obviously it's going to be more long term so I decided to put in my contract that I wanted to stay at a certain area that um, sort of I've, I've explored being there last year and a few of the other boys the foreigners lived in the same area so today is going to be IKEA day which is actually for me quite fun I know a lot of you know People that have girlfriends etc probably hate it when their wives drag them to Ikea but for me it's exciting. Um, I love making my place homely and try and make it feel as like I said homely as possible and I think that is one of the main 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 key, the key things for any athletes etc that are moving abroad is to try and make the place feel as much as home as possible because you can get you know times of where you feel homesick and where you start to miss people and miss that sort of vibe of being at home and being around. So it's very key to make your environment very comfortable, etc. So when you come back from training, it really feels like a home and not just like a staycation place where you don't really feel comfortable in the area you're living with. So I'm in IKEA today, I've got loads of things, I've got a massive list to, to shop through and I'm excited. Um, I'll try not to get lost and I'll probably enjoy some Swedish food as well, so I'm excited. <laughs> Every time I come to IKEA, the must be believe on that I always end up buying far too much. But that's what I love IKEA. Me being alone, um, I'm so used to you know moving to a new country or moving to a new place. I'm always on the move. Um, as part of being obviously an athlete and a professional footballer, is you have to learn to adapt to, to new environments and. I'm pretty custom now to, to know what I've got to buy. But the problem is, when you move again, you've got so much, you know, um, left over to either take with you or, you know, you leave it to someone else, etc. Dalam bola sepak, kita kena adjust, kita kena adapt banyak sebab kita tak tahu kontrak bila habis atau tim nak bayar kau untuk kau kena pindah, pergi loan. So, bila kau pindah rumah, memang susah. Um, kemarin dengan hari ni, Penat tengok muka saya pun tak boleh layan lagi. Banyak, too much, too much in the first couple of days to, to do. So I'm gonna get the place unpacked and just try and get as much done today. Tomorrow training, I need a good night's sleep. Good night's sleep. Hello bro. Eh, tak boleh dengar lah. Masih lagi tak boleh dengar. No volume, no volume. There is a problem on the output volume. What should I do? Yeah. Not connected to the Bluetooth. Hmm. Yeah, it's all fine. Lepas saya retire, saya balik England, saya tak main bola satu tahun lebih ya. Um, time tu, business pun kena um, sebab Covid. Um, lepas tu saya punya mental health, lepas bola memang kena. Saya punya mental health memang kena. Aku masuk depression. Um, lepas tu aku ada life coach yang tolong aku time tu. So, this time, bila saya balik, saya cakap dengan sendiri lah. Saya cakap dengan sendiri, saya nak bagi player yang susah tak boleh cakap a platform yang dia orang boleh tengok um, bila saya boleh tempat saya boleh bagi advice untuk player macam budak ataupun senior yang ada same experience dengan ai lepas tu aku nak buka fan punya cara lah dengan kita bila dia orang boleh tengok kita punya emotion semua um, lepas game mungkin dia orang pun rasa sama macam kita bukan macam pergi online bila kita kalah yeah. apa, apa apa macam ni ni yeah. budak ni tak nak main untuk Malaysia budak ni macam tu so, lah. ah, dia orang pun boleh understand kita ni lah ada emosi human being juga 
Yes. Bukan robot. Yes, betul betul je ni. Uh, actually dalam YouTube tu kita nampak uh, banyak benda yang menarik lah. Senario tu menyanyi sebelum tempat kolab tu um, kita tak buat. Tapi dekat Europe kan, dekat Europe kalau ada player baru dia kena buat initiation, dia kena menyanyi depan-depan oh. semua. Walaupun okay. muda, walaupun tua, kalau kau masuk tim baru. So aku cakap dengan abang sebab captain kan aku cakap kita kena bagi tim apa moral lagi kuat lah. So aku yeah. cakap kalau ada player baru kena nyanyi. So tapi yang last tu aku kena sebab dia orang cakap lama kau tak main kau macam baru juga kau pun tak ya. So uh, what else might be in you? Your, what your YouTube after this? Maybe uh, banyak lagi konten-konten yang you akan buat? Itu aku um, sekarang mau input more macam workout video uh, yang supplement makanan semua um, interview nanti saya balik UK ada interview dengan apa player-player semua kat sana professional player diorang right. boleh bagi tahu diorang punya journey juga macam mana yeah. diorang jadi professional um, macam 20 minit ke interview dengan professional player around the world. Good morning. Today's morning breakfast before I do my workout consists of a protein shake. Plant-based protein from the fresh company. Highly, highly recommended guys. They're actually available in Malaysia. Dekat Malaysia boleh dapat ni. Um, dengan Thailand pun juga. So, Highly recommend them guys for your protein, very healthy, non-GMO. Um, I'll mix that with oat milk, some blueberries and banana today. And then I've got my French press with some coffee from IKEA. Swedish, Svenska coffee, Svenska, up the Swedes. That is breakfast and I'll get to my workout. Plan today, coach. What's the plan for you today? My plan? This man? Physio with Pond. Three weeks, he said. Three weeks? Two weeks. Two. <laughs> Two weeks before you can start running me. Oh my god. <laughs> so, Rikab, beer. Best kit man in history is. Da, balik training. Sekarang, kita buat physio. Kita cuma beri. Dia cakap. Uh, tiga minggu, lagi tiga minggu boleh start hari tapi season dah bersepon so lucky for me so I've got time for the season start back to routine dinner every night with Kelich where you go brother? morning gym we've got treadmills, bike nothing really for the legs So, leg press. This is just my gym, man. And obviously, you've got the main gym with the club. Yeah.
Morning work done, it's a very simple sort of mobility routine that you can follow um, just on the way to lunch with who else? Well then Kellich and I'm preparing for tonight's game. Come on England! Wow! <laughs> 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 Come on! Come on, England! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, the boys! Horses. Fucking get to it! Horses! Fucking horses! <laughs> Junior Hobson! Stress. So, I think so, I think. Yes, in a, in a perfect. Football. Oh, my goodness. Four stars. Last night was a tough, tough pill to swallow, losing on penalties and uh, you know, what has been a really successful tournament for the young lads has now been overshadowed by the racial abuse that the young players got this morning after, you know, last night's events. Um, but firstly, I want to say congratulations to England and a huge well done to all the boys and the team management um, that participated in the Euro 2020. You did the nation proud um, and we were this close this close, so unlucky and well done. Secondly, I wanted to open up regarding reading what I did this morning on social media and seeing the fans behave in the way they did um, after a loss, you know, the, the bottle throwing, the fights, the hooliganism, and then obviously the racial comments on Saka, Marcus Rashford's, Jordan Sancho's pages. We are so behind. We are so behind inequality and we live in an era where social media plays such a huge part in everyone's lives and it's so easy for people to hide behind the screen and give these abusive comments without any repercussions and something needs to be done boycotting social media is not going to do anything to these people who still have the access and the power to have a word a voice on their own platform um, it's disgusting and you're an absolute disgrace. You're an absolute disgrace to the footballing community and to the nation. Um, and in a way, you know, you'd be the first guys to be singing it's coming home when England win. And you're the first to comment when England lose. Um, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve for football to be coming home because you've embarrassed your country and the people that are doing it are embarrassing the people that represent the country. These are 11, 22 boys going out to the pitch, playing for their country and your country. Remember that. One country together. And you're an absolute embarrassment to the footballing society. It's a disgrace. Um, and something needs to be done. We're so far behind. That's it. We're so far behind. And I speak about it a lot. You know, as a footballer, it's so hard to, to speak about it. Um, you know, because, you know, last night I was watching it as a neutral sometimes, as a fan. And, you know, you get frustrated watching the game. But... These comments you're reading is, oh. and that happens in other countries too. It happens in Malaysia. Oh. We need to get together, protect the boys, protect the England squad, and um, protect the other players that are going through it as well. Not just in England, but we need to get together and something, something really, really needs to be done. So, um, yeah, I'm out. I've got training today. <laughs> so. I know the boys are gonna are gonna give me a bit of abuse for England losing today, but it's a light ha light hearted banter. Um, so yeah, I just really wanted to come on here and speak up about it today because I'm just fuming. I'm angry to see you know country that I love, people representing your country like this, fighting hooligans, throwing punches at Italian fans trying to get home, and then racially abusing your own players that have just given their all to play for your country. 
disgrace. Sorry about the hair, it's very bad. Um, just a quick tip on recovery regarding the Achilles tendon, etc., which I obviously suffered during my Malaysia call up. Um, I've just done morning gym and now I'm in the pool, which obviously is beneficial for your recovery anyway. But for my Achilles, it's important. You know, I'm starting now to try and get the movement back in my ankle um, and the fluidity because I've obviously been off my Achilles now for over a month. And next week I'm going to try to start running, so it's very important to get the movement back. And being inside the pool just takes the pressure and the weight from your body off that Achilles. And there's plenty of exercises you can do, um, you know, obviously heel raises, calf raises, and try and do your running um, in the pool. Plenty of exercises you can do. I'm going to list a few here, um, which I'm going to do today. I'm going to start off by warming the Achilles up by doing calf raises. Um, double, single on both sides because we want to get both sides moving and then I'm going to do some light jogging from end to end to the pool. Just a quick 10 minutes just to get the range of movement back in my ankles and the mobility back into my Achilles. So when I transfer it from here onto the pitch, it will feel a lot lighter and it will feel a lot better um, and it will be less stress on my Achilles. So I'm going to get to it. Just a quick tip, when you are running and you're doing any sort of running work to get the movement back into your ankles, into the Achilles, in the pool, make sure you're getting the whole range of movement in. Um, so let's say this is my foot, probably a really bad example, but the best I can give is from heel to toe and up. Make sure you're not just on your toes and you're getting that whole range of movement in. Because once you transfer it onto the pitch, you're getting that muscle memory back into your legs, into your movement, into your body. So it makes it a lot easier when you get back to training. Goals in these, lad. Yeah, out. <laughs> out. Out. Directly. No, listen, listen. You You lose the ball. One time I don't see that you make reaction. I say, yeah, this is last time. Second time. After fucking out. Come on, my friend. Back in the manor. Back in the manor. Come on. There he is. There's the spot. Good thing. Good morning guys, um, so we've just been told that apparently the season is not going to start until potentially October, November, so kita baru ni kena tahu season tahun ni mungkin lambat start, November atau Oktober, so sekarang mentally susah, um, it's very mentally difficult now to, to understand what's going on in the season. The football season might stop, but time doesn't. Um, and for that, it means for me, you know, I turned 30 this year and I can't have another season where I'm not playing, um, especially at this age. So currently in discussion with my agent um, to look at other avenues of what I can do this year. Um, so check out. Season dah berhenti, tapi time tak berhenti. So untuk I, memang susah sebab tahun ni aku 30. Um, untuk bola sepak 
aku saya tak boleh ni nak berhenti saya kena ada season yang saya main so sekarang saya tengah discussion dengan agent semua um, untuk apa saya boleh buat tahun ni um, and it's a difficult 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 period um, for any athlete during covid because your season is stop start um, how do you maintain your fitness level of fitness how do you maintain your mental um, health etc during these times especially when you're alone um, so yeah it's difficult you know especially when training is now stopped so we're not allowed to train to try and maintain that level of professionalism um, keeping your body healthy your mental state healthy to go again 100% for when the season starts you know I mean you're stop starting and you keep having these pre mini pre-seasons it's not it's not it's not good not good for the body not good for your, good for your mind so currently waiting um, for confirmation on what's at, what's happening in the Thai league um, luckily for me you know I'm working with Harry Knock back home um, advanced performance to give me the right workouts and the right nutrition that I can use during this period of time. Like I said, to maintain, um, you know, sustain my body in the, in the best possible way. Hindsight, it's good with my injury. It's given me more time, but like I said, I don't want another season where I'm dwelling and waiting, etc., etc. So I'm in discussion and this is part of football and this is part of life. You know, I've just moved into this beautiful place. I've just bought all the accessories, etc. Um, finally settled, and now I might be, you know, going somewhere else. So, just one of these things you have to <laughs> ride the waves. You know, to be a professional athlete, you have to learn to ride the waves. And by that I mean, you know, sometimes it keeps crashing down, but you have to get back on the board and you know get on the next wave. So, um, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. In the meantime, you know, enjoy the training videos that I have. I'm going to post as many training videos for you guys, you know, especially for any young athletes that are going through the motion of trying to be a, a professional athlete. Do use the stuff that I do um, because it's only going to benefit you. And if I could turn back the time 10, 20 years, you know, I'll be doing the exact same things that I'm doing now for my body um, to give me the best possible chance to, to sign that professional contract. So. Ah, here we go again. Level one, one. <laughs> hey, bleep test, huh? Yeah. Level one, two. Oh, not a chance, Gaffer. Not me today. Tom, next year, huh? Me next year. No. Delice, how was your pre-season? Very good, my friend. I am so strong, so, so, so powerful, my friend. Why is pre-season important for a footballer? It's very important, my friend. To avoid injury, to prepare good, so you can be ready for the season. Vamos, <laughs> carajo. center um, getting my blood pressure checked um, I've got two weeks of intensive rehab in here for my Achilles just to make sure that there's no further problems so I'm doing laser therapy which specifically um, goes into the part where there was a small tear um, alongside some Chinese uh, herbal massage therapy and compression hot compression of my Achilles 
which is good. So I've got two weeks of this plus my strength program and training, um, and I've got a month, just over a month before the season starts, which is great, great news. So. Laser therapy on my Achilles to speed up the process. Um, season's now been postponed till September. So here I am doing laser on my Achilles. Feels a lot better, but I still feel some pain when I am sprinting and really pushing it. So the laser will help get into the areas that ultrasound etc. cannot get to. Um, and it's more focused internally in the exact point where I'm feeling the pain. So this would be good, two weeks of this, including strengthening and other rehab I have. Um, I now have a month and a half till the season starts. So let's go. Your dreaded, dreaded fat composition test. Am I getting a fine? No, no, no. Jamo, I'm fine. <laughs> oh man, stop that Look for me, I can stop. I go down, I go down, my friend. I go down. <laughs> Pre season antics here. Pre season, so many fines. So many fines. Season is just around the corner, and this morning we are at our medical. When you are in a league and you play professionally, you have to do a medical test. Um, you know, especially with things that happen to Christian Eriksen, etc. In the Euros, you need to make sure that you're getting your everything checked. So today we are getting our blood test, our heart monitored, X-ray, MRI, and a urine test. So it's going to be a long morning. That's uh, that is not one of the players, it's a physio. <laughs> Hopefully, I will pass with flying colours. Drummer. has many tattoos. I hate needles. I like the keys of getting a medical before the season starts. Um, it's super important because you know you can show any underlying health issues that you have before the season starts. You look at cases like Christian Eriksen, Fabrice Moramba um, in the past who collapse on the pitch with cardiac arrest um, and problems they've had with the heart. So before going into the season, it's very, very important to highlight anything that can possibly, you know, affect you um, on the loading that you have in the season. So if you are signing at a new club, make sure you are getting your medical before the season starts and before you get underway with the team. Um, so yeah, just got my x-ray left to do. Should be all right. Fingers crossed, I'm all healthy. Thank you. Nothing King. for every goal scored, 80 C like assist for sure. Everything Everything normal apart from my heart, which is apparently enlarged, which means it's too big, and my heart rate is too slow. And Kelly has just told me that it's normal for a football player to have this problem, but after retirement, could be a problem. Yeah, that is true. Huh? But you see, it can be covered. <laughs> so you can share raw, man. You can share raw. So the chef is about to make some carbonara for the team. Everyone's getting a fresh trim. Best barber in Chonbury. Here's a tester, out of 10. Is the chef enjoying life? What, uh, how did you cook the carbonara, bro? I used uh, spaghetti and mushrooms and uh, lots of love. 
Don't get my uh, my thin my thin hair on top. <laughs> Good morning, so we've just finished the medical which I've had before the season um, and I found out two things which are not very common in athletes but very common in athletes that don't eat meat is um, I'm close to being anemic which means that I'm, my body's obviously low in iron because I don't eat meat um, and for anyone else out there who doesn't eat meat it's quite important to try and balance your diet especially when you're going vegan um, because things like this can happen. So, you know, my iron in my body is very low. I've been advised to implement more irons in my diet. So where can I find my irons? Legumes, spinach, and a lot of quinoa um, are probably the main sources of iron if you're going vegan. Um, also, having a balanced diet is important. You don't actually have to be vegan in sport. Uh, vegan, vegetarian, meat eating, it's all a choice. Um, it's all dependent on what your body wants and what your body needs. So listen to your body and you'll find the right diet. Number two from the medical is that I apparently have an enlarged heart and my um, beats per minute is very low, but that is because I'm quite fit. Having hypertrophy in the heart is very common in footballers and athletes all around the world. Um, it's just very important to make sure you go see a car uh, cardiologist to keep an eye on it, especially after the season and obviously just keep an eye on it during the season because it is common and it's not something that you should be sort of concerned about, um, but it is worth monitoring throughout the season and after the year. So that is the medical, as a lot of you may have found out um, through his own Instagram about Brendan Gann. He's been diagnosed with testicular cancer. Um, with one of your good friends that you've met, you know, through football. I met Brendan through football over 10 years ago, well, over eight years ago, not 10 years ago, over eight years ago now. It's horrible news to, you know, you, don't, you never really think that things like this affect people near you and your closest friends. And when it happens to someone so close to home, it just makes you realize that, you know, life is precious. And, and you know, Brendan's one of the healthiest people I know. You know, he's so fit diet is so good and it just makes you realize never to take your body etc for granted uh, because it can happen to anyone but if it was to happen to anyone um, cancer has chosen a very very strong and inspiring guy in Brendan he's someone who's inspired me throughout you know all his injuries he's had to go through both his ACLs and now he has another thing another hurdle to jump over I know he's going to be fine. It's just a quick, short video on the Honest Footballer to show you that I do love you, mate, and I'll be there every step of the way, through every, every single step of the way. Also, a huge reminder for all the guys out there that you know you should check your, yeah, check your junk um, every day for you know little bumps or anything like that, and do go to a doctor to get checked because you never know. So stay safe. Gani, I love you mate and it's going to be a great opportunity for you and us to share awareness for testicular cancer around the world. That is the end of The Honest Footballer, this episode 16, 15, 16. Thank you for following, thank you for sharing, thank you for following the journey. Please, please, please like, share, subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.